time. That's self-awareness. Uh, Carmelo Anthony I killed for years because he forced to trade to New York, forcing New York to trade pieces away. So when he got to New York, they didn't have any pieces. Right. That's lacking self-awareness. McVay understands the temperature of the room here. I think he's probably rolling his eyes a little bit at some of this stuff. Yeah, but I think he also wants, you know, he. it seems like he wants the people around him to be elevated, too. Right. So, you know, he's, he's saying all the right things. And finally... Um, not everyone is happy about Adam Gase being the ne next Jets head coach, but Alshon Jeffrey thinks he could work with Sam Darnold. They were together in Chicago in 2015, and he yeah. told New Jersey Advanced Media his impact will be huge. Knowing the Adam Gase that I know and the potential that the Jets are looking for, I'm pretty sure Sam is going to be a Super Bowl MVP. He can win a Super Bowl. Darnold will be an MVP in this league. Working with Gase, I expect big things from those two. You know, it's just funny. Does everybody get, you know, everybody, Cleveland loves their coaching hire. Arizona loves their coaching hire. The Bengals are going to hire a 35-year-old. Green Bay just hired a guy who's called play for one year. Adam Gase has been an NFL head coach, has gotten to the playoffs, gave Peyton Manning his greatest year, right. was the quarterback coach for Tebow during his winning streak. Nick Saban and Peyton Manning called on his behalf because Saban took him when he was a 21-year-old snotty-nosed kid down in LSU and gave him all sorts of responsibility because Saban thought, who the hell is this bright kid? Does everybody get that Adam Gase is going to work? This is not like a newbie. He's a 40-year-old that took the dysfunctional Dolphins to the playoffs with Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't love Gase's tenure in Miami, obviously, because it didn't exactly work out the way that I wanted it to. But you are right about the playoffs, and you are. The facts remain that he was with Peyton Manning when he had his best year. He greatly improved. improved by, by the Tyler. way, every situation doesn't work for every person. It Maybe does. Miami just wasn't the situation for him. By the way, Belichick couldn't get the quarterback right in Cleveland, got fired. Pete Carroll couldn't get quite the quarterback right maybe in New England. You start looking at coaches that get fired in this league that we perceive to be good coaches. It's generally the same thing. They couldn't quite get the quarterback right. Herm Edwards told me this years ago. He said, Colin, if I got the right quarterback, I wouldn't be a broadcaster. I'd be a coach because it pays more and it's a lot of fun and we all, coaches want to coach, not broadcast. Right. So, Gase and Darnold is going to work. Now, Super Bowls, I don't know. But the idea that everybody, all the other four young teams <laughs> love their hire, and they're like 33, 35, never been a coach, and you're I not. Just, I don't, I, again, I don't think the age has anything to do with it. I just think that. He's when got you look, experience. When you look, yeah, it's experience. And, I mean, Gase has it, so we'll see. Yeah. Everyone's excited about all their hires. Yeah, joy with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Let's bring him in. We got a guy that knows all about Sean McVay. D'Angelo Hall spent time with him in Washington with the Redskins, 14 NFL seasons. He was a multiple-time pro bowler. So you know McVay. It, you know, by the way, he, he was an assistant at 22. He was a coach at one point at 22, which is absurd. But that was that was on an accident now, Colin. Was that? <laughs> he was a coach on an accident. You talking about he, him when he being was a position with, coach? Well, no, he, when he was a 22 year old coach, like where was that at? At 22, he was like uh, 22 Oakland he, he with John Gruden. A, yeah, QC, I think in like, Oakland. I thought you meant the the time he stumbled upon being the tight ends coach. He was our QC starting off in Washington, and we had our tight ends coach John Embry get the head job at Colorado. So they moved him up. They moved him up, and I'm like, wow, that that's pretty cool. So now let me. Let, what, did you know? Now everybody knows he's smart now. But when you were there, you're doing your own thing. You're a defensive guy. You're a Pro Bowl player. It's not like you're spending a lot of time. But was there talk that, who, who's Boy Wonder over here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it was a couple of guys like that on that staff. It was Sean McVay was on that staff. Matt LaFleur was on that staff. Uh, Mike McDaniel, who you're starting to hear a little was bit Shanahan? about. Who's Shanahan's run game coordinator. He was on that staff. Uh, Aubrey Pleasant, the DB coach for the Rams, was on that staff. Uh, Raheem Morris, who we already knew a whole lot about. And so it was a slew of really, really, really good coaches that you knew they were good coaches because most young coaches are intimidated by everyone else around them. So if you're an offensive coach, you really don't say anything to the defensive guys, especially the corners or the DBs, because they can be a little bit, you know, uh, you know, rep, they, they could go off at any given moment, DBs. And so, you know, most offensive guys, coaches don't really say anything to, you know, to the DBs. Um, they kind of stay in their position groups, but these guys would mingle amongst everyone on, you know, on the roster. You know, you'd catch Sean over here picking my brain about coverage. Hey, hey, so what were you guys in on that particular coverage? Now, you know, why did you come off trying to understand why we did this or why did I see, 
you know, why did I see this play this way instead of the way he was he a was curious information seeker? Yeah, and I'm telling you know, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, Sean, so why did he throw this ball? Well, you know, when your back was turned, even though you didn't mean to turn your back, because he saw your back turn, he thought that was open. So, you know, we would always just, all of us, just meeting of the minds, it kind of felt like. And so, yeah, as a young coach, you knew all those guys were, were just cut different because I had been around most coaches who didn't act like these guys. When they were 29, yeah, 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I said earlier, uh, anger and resentment comes from one place expectations. So if mm -hmm. you have realistic expectations in life, you don't get mad. Okay? Mm -hmm. if, 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 if Dak Prescott is Alex Smith, you were actually, about two months ago, you came on this show and you said, I like Dak. He's Alex Smith. And yeah. I said today, if I gave you Alex Smith's NFL career, mm -hmm. eight straight winning seasons, three Pro, Pro Bowls, five division titles, you would say, if you're a Cowboy, here it is. No, I want you to look at this. Eight straight winning seasons, three pole bowls, three division titles, five playoff appearances. If I told Cowboy fans today, that's going to be Dak in a decade. Wouldn't they take that? Yeah, I would hope so. So, <laughs> so my point is, as long as you realize that you'll be disappointed in the NFC Championship, you'll be disappointed at some point because he won't vertically carry you to big wins yeah but you know i don't know if you'll necessarily be disappointed because alex smith dak prescott they won't command the 33 million dollars or the 30 to 35 million that seems to hamper a lot of these rosters from a personnel standpoint when you commit so much money to the to the quarterback position um, it makes it very hard to put really, really, really good players around him. You can put some good players. You can hit on some on some draft picks. You you know you might even can get some guys who play uh, way way above their expectations. But you're not going to keep your own free agent to Leo Mack to get a Aaron Donald to get a Von Miller to get these impactful defensive players or even other players around guys offensively. It's hard. Just think if you're paying a quarterback $33 million, then you go out and get a number one receiver you're paying $15 million to. That's a lot of money for two positions. And then you got to somehow get a left tackle to, to be really good. Then you have to, you know, put other guys on that offensive line and then not even talking about defensively what you have to do. Um, you know, either one side of the ball is going to be really young and you're going to invest draft picks on them or you're just going to have a really good quarterback, kind of like Green Bay's trying to do it. A really good quarterback, a, a, a great quarterback, and good players around him, not great players around him. And I think Dallas will have a chance because they'll be able to get Dak for a, a bargain and they'll be able to put really great players around him. And so he doesn't need to be great. I think he'll still be a really good player. And like you said, you know, you saw those numbers. You I mean, Alex games. Smith's a really good player. You win a, Alex won a you, lot of games. he's won a lot of games. And so, you know, I just think that's the formula. And you see teams who are trying to load up now while they have that rookie quarterback on those, you know, minimum money contracts because they know at some point, I mean, I can't let them walk. I have to pay them. And so, you, you know, you got to get it while you can. All right, I'm going to go through all four games. Give me your thoughts on each. Colts <laughs> at the Chiefs. Your gut feeling is... <sighs> I mean, I think the Chiefs win this game, but I think it's a lot closer than people think. Um, I think the Colts' defense is for real. They're so aggressive. They play fast. The one knock on them is they don't play as much man. They play a lot of zones. And it can be good. It can be bad. Patrick Mahomes is a guy, though, that can pick apart zones. We've seen him do it time and time again. And those little fast receivers and Tyreek Hill and some of those other guys, Kelsey, running down the seam, if you don't have bodies on those guys and you let them just run through zones, it's, it's going to make for a long day. But I think Andrew Luck and 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 knowing he, he, he gets the opportunity to go against this Kansas City defense, um, you know, they they haven't been great <laughs> so far this season. Um, but I think they'll they'll get a little bit better playing in Arrowhead, knowing all the history of, you know, postseason losses there. I think they'll be amped up. But, I mean, I ultimately think Kansas City offense is just going to be a little bit too much. Good call. Cowboys at the Rams, gut feeling. Um, I mean, Rams. Rams. You really I mean, like confidently. I, 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 I do. I just think... That the Cowboys are a really good football team. They're young. If I was a head Super. coach or yep. if I was a GM, this would be the roster I wanted because it's, it's so young. Look it's at this. talented. D'Angelo, listen to this. Um, 
They're the first playoff team without a starter over 30 in 31 years. So not only are they wow. young. They don't have one starter over 30? Sean Lee no longer starting. Okay, Sean Lee doesn't. 30. Okay. Okay. And he's not starting anymore. Wow. And they got his reply. They're the youngest NFL good team in three decades. Wow. So when you say they're young, it's like, yeah. No, no, they're, 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 they're historically really young. young. They're really young. Um, I mean, they're still trying to learn and figure it out. And, and you know, I ultimately think Dak Prescott can win football games and will win football games. But, you know, right now he's still learning how to really be an elite quarterback. Right. And so I think it, it you know, their, they'll team, their team and, and that offense will go as Zeke goes. Yeah. And, yeah, the Rams probably aren't built to stop the run. When you have a, a converted safety playing Mike Linebacker in uh, – uh, what's the what's the kid from Jalen? Well, who are you talking about? The Rams or the uh, uh, Cowboys? I'm talking about the Jalen Smith or Van Der Esch? No, I'm talking about the Rams. Uh, gosh, the guy from Tampa. Oh, Mark Barron. Mark Barron, exactly. He's not built to take on ISO blocks, and you know Zeke's bigger than him. Most Mike linebackers are normally bigger than the running backs, and so the Rams aren't necessarily built to stop the run. But I think they'll drop more safeties in the boxes. They'll you know they'll do certain things scheme wise to prevent Zeke and that offense from running the ball and ultimately put all the pressure and the onus on, on Dak Prescott. And, you know, I, I just think the Rams are, will be a little bit too much. A lot of their late season uh, 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 mishaps have been self-inflicted. They've been Jerry Goff instead of, taking that check down that's wide open right here, teams knowing they want to go deep is two guys on the post, and he's still throwing it. And those are things that I know Sean and that offense has been coaching them up to see, like, hey, look, you can't always take the big shot. I know it was open early in the season, but teams now are starting to play for it. They know that's what we want to do in our offense. Let's hit this check down. Let's give the ball to these guys who can make plays in space and let them make the plays. And so um, Jared Goff hadn't been doing that as much in the, in the second half of the season, but I think – you know, having this week off and watching film and just really seeing the mistakes he's made and, you know, some self-inflicted mistakes that offense has made, I think the Rams will be all right, and I think they'll come out with this win. Stick around, come back. I'll have you look at the Chargers and the Patriots and the Eagles and the Saints. It's a wild weekend, a blazing five, top of next hour. Albert Breer, Eric Dickerson, Greg Jennings, Jason McIntyre. We're packed in L.A. It's the Herd.